everyone. I'm Alyssa. And I'm Brandon. And, and we're, we're the, the Wagners. Wagners. We're a husband-wife duo who travel all around the country since 2021 for Brandon's travel nursing job. We love hiking, car camping, new cities, and of course, the best food and drink. Along with adventure, we always look for ways to keep our travel budget friendly. So pack your bags and join us as we wander together. Hey Wanders! Hey YouTube! Welcome back! Alright, so we're Brandon and Alyssa. Brandon is a travel nurse in the United States of America. We are currently living in Seattle, Washington. We have been here since the very, very end of August. It is currently the middle of January. Um, we actually extended this contract a little bit, but um, sadly our time here has come to a close. We've had a great time in Washington, um, as hopefully you've seen from our videos. Um, but adventure awaits. Um, we're going to hang out on the West Coast for a little longer. So next stop, we are going um, to Van Nuys outside Los Angeles, California. Um, if we were doing this road trip straight through, it would only take about 18 hours. But we want to explore California because we've spent like 48 hours there total so far. So we're going to spend a little more time. We're going to take the slow route and do a lot of stops. So we're all set up and ready to go here. So today, as you can see, we spent the whole day packing. We do have to drive two different cars for our setup, which is a bit of a bummer, um, but we are able to live comfortable lives um, on, our, on the rest of our travels and not be able to compromise too much. So you can see we have one very, very full car. Originally, we were gonna camp car camp in the Highlander. We actually have quite a few videos with us car camping in the Highlander. So we have this platform bed right here. Um, underneath our drawers and then underneath up top um, is some accessible space as well. Um, this has actually worked out really, really well for us. Um, it does cut into our space a little bit, but it makes it so that we can um, have all of this storage on top. And underneath is still very accessible for us. So we have our... Uh, um, we have our... Uh, um, daily use type stuff, our fire starters, our fans, you know, uh, emergency type stuff. And then underneath here, it's kind of hard to pull out, but we have all of our cooking utensils. Um, we have our oven and everything like that. So a um, little bit tough to pull out, but uh, much more accessible than anything in there. Um, and then, so this is our supplies. And then we are able to leave the Prius completely open for our camping. So you can see this is a much more welcoming site. We do have our string lights up top. We have our bed here. Um, there's a little bit of storage behind the front seats um, that is kind of a platform for our bed. Um, but the majority of our storage is over there. Um, we do also have a rooftop bag as well. Like I said, we, we still pack way too heavy. Um, we need to get rid of more stuff, but it's hard to do when you're on the other side of the country. So, um, yeah, let's uh, go ahead and get started with our adventure. Okay, so with that, let's get started. Our first stop, we're going to be driving for about seven hours, and we are going to Crater Lake National Park in Oregon. Let's get driving. So this was our campsite for our first night. Um, this was nothing fancy. This was literally just like a side pull off on the road. Um, we actually found this on iOverlander, which is an app that like tells you places you can camp. Um, I can link it in the bottom, but yeah, nothing fancy, just on a roadside stop. Hi, we're cold. <laughs> <laughs> we're coming to you from inside our car at Crater Lake because the wind is crazy out there. Yes. I'll probably put, um, some... I'll probably leave the audio in one of my videos just so you can hear how intense the wind is. Yeah. Um, so we're at Crater Lake. I would recommend coming here in the summer because it is uh, mid-January right now. And not only is it really, really cold, there's snow like packed up on the sides of the roads. So there really isn't too much to see because all of the roadways and trails are blocked off. So we had to like go through the snow just to get to the crater and I only saw the crater for about 10 seconds and then I said I've seen it I'm going back <laughs> to the car yeah luckily I got some b-roll for us um but uh 
yeah, I mean, it's just insane up there. Right now, the car says it's 30 degrees Fahrenheit, but I promise you at the top of uh, the the hill where you can actually see the crater, I mean, the, the wind is just so bad up there that you can't stand there for more than a few seconds and be, you know, even remotely comfortable. Um, but yeah, the drive up here was kind of bittersweet. You know, it, it's, it's sad because you can't really see much around you, but it's also kind of cool because... Um, the, the, you can tell that it's just cold up here year round um, and they get a ton of snow over a long period of time because the snow is literally packed up as high as the car. I have some B-roll that I took while, uh, while I was driving. Oh my God, don't admit that. Jeez. Um, <laughs> but uh, um, took some B-roll and you can see, I mean, it's just snow on either side. I mean, luckily the roads are really clear, so it really wasn't dangerous driving at all. Um, but uh, definitely just crazy i've never seen snow packed up yeah. that high we're also the only ones crazy enough to be here this time yeah of we the get year. the whole place to ourselves <laughs> um we didn't have to even show our national parks pass there was nobody there to even check us um, it might be because it's early too it was like yeah. before 8 a.m so um so that might be part of it as well but uh yeah we're the only ones here the view was really really cool i did get a little bit of video to show you guys but we were not up there for long and we can't record a video up there um, I was told that there are like 30 viewpoints for us to be able to um, look at in the summer where we can see the, the lake. Um, for us, it really was just this one. All the rest of them were plowed to a point that you couldn't get there at all. Um, so this is really the only place that we could see it. Um, it would be cool to see the other ones come here in the summer, but uh, you know, it's just kind of worked out with our road trip for when, it, when we could see it. Um, other things, so about Crater Lake, um, I did do a, just a little bit of research beforehand. Um, it is from a volcano, um, so Crater Lake is the volcano. Um, it erupted, it blew off the top of the volcano, and then that's where the lake comes from. So there's no lakes or streams that feed it, come in or come out. Um, it's just this lake at the top of what used to be an active volcano. Um, Another thing about the lake, I don't know the exact parameters on in what classification, but I know that it sets some kind of a record for being like the deepest lake. Um, so I, I don't know if it's deepest in a certain area or what the parameters are. We'll look it up and link it in here, but there's some kind of a record for being deepest something. <laughs> um, but it, it is big and apparently it goes incredibly deep because it goes into the center of a volcano. Um, and, uh, yeah, I think. Yeah. yeah, so today's actually the beginning of day two. Um, so we didn't record anything yesterday because we were literally just driving and then we got back right as the sun was setting. So we just kind of hurry up and did our things and went to bed. Um, so our first night went pretty well. We slept in here, um, in our Prius. Her name is Shelly, by the way, if you refer to Shelly. Um, and so today's the first day, or the first activity on day two. Um, we're also gonna go, I don't think we'll get into Redwood today, right? We're just going no, we'll to camp No, we'll be camping outside right, okay. yeah, right before Redwood. Yeah, so we're headed into California today. Um, and yeah, so that's, yeah. that's pretty much it. So. Yeah. so last night we were happy to have the Prius um, because it gave us the option to camp in the car. It was like 17 degrees when we woke up, snow all around us, uh, but we were comfortable in here. We set the climate controls to 60, which was actually a little too warm for us. It was plenty warm. Um, oh, that's fine. <laughs> a little too warm for me, uh, but it was comfortable. So we set it to 60, we used less than one little tick of gas. Um, and then we woke up, we were just a few minutes from the entrance to the park and, uh, yeah, we came here bright and early and then we can continue on with our day. So, um, that was a, a huge advantage for us, um, cause there aren't a lot of civilization or motels or hotels or anything near us. Um, so it's great to be able to camp right outside the park. <clears throat> um, and, uh, yeah, and then tonight we're on our way, we're going to California and we're going to stop at Plant Fitness on the way, get some showers, get a workout in and uh, then hit kind of same kind of thing, hit Redwood bright and early in the morning tomorrow. So let's, uh, yeah. let's, let's head out. All right, let's go. So Brandon was right. This is the deepest lake in the United States. It is 1,943 feet deep. Um, and I'm going to cut the audio for a second so you can hear just how crazy the wind is. So turn your headphones down for a second. Yeah. 
So early day two, we made it into California. It was actually pretty funny because um, when we got to the border, we had to get like checked in like you do at the airport. They asked me if I had any fruit or vegetables and I was like, I have some apples. And they were like, oh, well, like, are they from a farm or from a grocery store? And I was like, they're from a grocery store. And they were like, okay, like you're good. It was funny, I've never had that going into any other state before. Okay, so it's the end of day two. Um, we're kind of half inside Redwood National Park, I guess. Um, so the way it works is there's three state parks and then there's the national park. They're all kind of in cahoots, I'd say, um, where they all kind of work together or whatever. Um, and right now we're inside one of the state parks. I'm blanking Jedediah on Smith. Thank you. I so remember because that's the name Angela likes on the office. Wow. So Jedediah Smith um, is where we are right now and we're at a campsite. So we paid like 40 bucks for the two vehicles and a campsite. And it's kind uh, of pricier. Kind of a little bit more than we typically spend, but it's nice to be in a campsite. And I think from what I was seeing online, it sounds like you basically need to be in a campsite or else they won't let you camp anywhere. So it's a little bit tougher in California or at least this area. So. Anyway, we're in Redwoods. Um, we're not under like the big Redwoods, but they're they're still big. Um, we'll shoot to some B-roll and our campsite is cute and there's a little bear box and everything. So I feel a lot more secure here. Campfire. Um, able to get a campfire going, we'll have some s'mores. Right now we're enjoying some uh, fettuccine alfredo. Um, the way we've been doing food here is we go to the grocery stores and we, um, we get like frozen foods, um, like the pre-made bags or whatever. Um, they're like 10 bucks for the two of us and then that's our, that's our dinner and then we get like a pre-made lunch. Um, and for breakfast we had hard boiled eggs and a carb and yogurt and string cheese. So. Yep, and coffee. Yep, we're not, mm -hmm. we're not cutting any corners around here. Yeah, let's dig in and then um, so tomorrow we'll do the actual like inside of Redwood National Park. So we'll see you there. Welcome to California. This is the beginning of day three. Um, we spent the night at Redwood last night, and guess what? We're still gonna be in Redwood tonight, but a different park. We're driving about three hours, and we're still gonna be <laughs> in the Redwood area. Um, we love the trees. I feel like I'm driving through an enchanted forest, and then this beach showed up out of nowhere. So, I don't know. So far, we've only spent like 48 hours in LA, so I'm excited to get a little more California time under our belt. Yeah. Anyway, let's go. So Brandon and I are obsessed with the California topography. We have, um, as you see here, like the massive forest, but then you just pop out of the forest and you'd be like driving along the coast. Um, and there's like mountains in the distance. Like it's just so beautiful. It's something that like we've never seen before. So it was really exciting to just like weave in and out all of these like different types of landscapes and topography so that was something we definitely appreciated being from the east coast where everything is flat um, so that was really exciting so redwood is home to some of the tallest trees in the world i'll get more into the difference of like the bigger trees in sequoia and whatnot later um, but for right now um, there are a lot of like drive-through trees out here um, they're on private land, so you have to pay like $5 or something to get in. But like you can go through the trees and my dad is actually, was born overseas and when he moved to the States, um, they moved to California first. And he had been telling me about these drive through trees like my whole life. So I was so excited to go through these and send my dad pictures. Um, but it was a little scary when we were going through there because it looks so tight. So we just took the Prius through, but we made it and it was super cool and we got awesome pictures. So yeah, definitely stop through and get the drive through trees and the walk through trees. It's just incredible. I promise you've never seen trees like this before. 
So day four, we spent a lot more time in Redwood, and aside from that, it was pretty much just driving an errand day, so going to the gym and getting groceries, so I don't have too much footage. Um, but for our camp that night, we went to just a little pullout that we found on iOverlander, and we got there right at sunset, and it had a great view. And it also had like natural little wells of fresh water, so people were actually coming for the sunset and for the water, but it cleared out at night and we could be alone. All right, so it's actually the morning of day five. Um, yesterday we didn't do that much. I don't know, we were driving around a lot. We've pretty much been in Redwoods and then yesterday we finally got out of, not finally, but um, you know, we made it out of Redwoods and uh, we were staying like on the coast last night. Um, and today we're right outside of San Francisco. Believe it or not, the Golden Gate Bridge is back there <laughs> behind all that fog, it's there. Um, so that's kind of sad that we don't have a great day to see it, but that's okay. Um, we're about to head into town and we're actually gonna go out for breakfast today and explore the city a little bit. Yep. Okay. So I know this makes us terrible travelers, but we didn't actually end up spending that much time in San Francisco. Um, we drove through it and we liked it and we stopped for breakfast. Honestly, we were more excited to get to Yosemite because that was our next point and we didn't want to keep dealing with parking in the city. So we kind of just went, got breakfast and then headed to Yosemite. Okay, good morning. It's the top of day six. Um, so I didn't get any footage of our campsite last night because we got in and it was already pretty dark. Thank you. Sorry, I'm trying to keep my hands warm. Um, uh, so, I, we didn't get too much of the campsite then, so I'll show you it now. Um, but the plan for today is we have about four and a half hours of driving. We're gonna go um, see Yosemite a little bit. Um, cause we only, more. Yeah, we only saw a little bit. We came in at like five, so it was... It was more like four, four thirty. Um, so we drove in and we could see pretty well as we came in, but it was starting to get dark by the time we actually got to the campsite. Um, and we only really came from the entrance to the campsite. Luckily, the campsite's like kind of towards the middle of the park, um, but uh, we still have about half the park to see, uh, maybe even a little bit more, so. Yeah, um, yeah we're at the Upper Pines campsite. Um, anyway, we'll show you this campsite around, and then we'll get uh, show you some more of Yosemite and Kings Canyon today. All right, so right there are the two cars. We got the sleeping car up front, and then the packing car out back. Then we have our um it's kind of a mess right now but we were we were eating right there at the picnic table you can see it's pretty snowy right now so um weren't exactly settling out very much but uh um we have our our food set up we had some eggs and some uh some espresso um we had yep all of our food there and everything but there's we have bear storage with our uh our spots and we had a fire last night um you can't really see it through the trees too well but there are just some massive mountains around here. So we are right in the middle of Yosemite. And I mean, we are just right into the thick of it. Um, so yeah, yeah, we'll uh, show you more and some better views. Um, let's go. I was surprised to see how many people were camping despite how cold it was. So similarly to Crater Lake, the roads were cleared, but the uh, sides were plowed with a bunch of snow piled up. So I looked in my handy dandy national parks guide and I was surprised to see that it said that winter is actually the best time to visit. Um, but that's because it draws less crowds and because it looks the most beautiful in the snow, which I have to imagine is correct. So it's pretty beautiful out there. Um, also for my book, I learned that Yosemite is the third national park um, and it became such after John Muir wrote a letter to Congress in 1890 asking to help protect it from growing tourism and industries neglecting the park's protection. Uh, the park is 1,190 square miles and the Yosemite Valley is one mile wide and seven miles long. Um, so of course Yosemite is still popular for tourism today, hosting millions of visitors annually, um, but the park is protected and many of the trails, canyons, and rivers are the same ones that John Muir enjoyed so many decades ago. Um, so please don't forget to do your part to be a responsible camper, leave no trace, and properly dispose of your trash and store your food. Also remember Smokey the Bear, and remember if your embers are too hot to touch, they're too hot to leave. So if you love the outdoors like Brandon and I do, please do your part to keep it clean and beautiful for everyone. Remember guys, there's no planet B. 
We went to Kings Canyon before Sequoia, but both have those ever so famous Sequoia trees. So we stayed in the Azalea Campground for $28 a night, and the Azalea Campground is actually the only one open year round, so it's the only one that we could go to since this was the winter. Hi, we're not down here to announce our latest rap album that we're taking photos for. We're trying to show you this huge tree. So we're at the Grant, General Grant tree in um, Kings Canyon National Park in California. This is the third largest tree in the world. Um, it's a sequoia tree and it is 40 feet in diameter. It is 269, 268 feet tall and it is 17,000, excuse me, 1700, 1700 years old. And it is 1,254 ton tons. Um, I'm trying to read my, my fact sheet behind me. Um, so yeah, we're home to some of the biggest trees in the world. We have even bigger trees that we're going to go see, but this is the first one, Gren General Grant Tree. So Kings Canyon and Sequoia National Parks are actually attached, um, but since they're in the midst of the Sierra Nevada mountain range, you need to maneuver kind of around the mountains. So you can't just drive from the inside of one into the next. You need to use separate entrances outside of the park. Um, so it was always the plan to have like an extension of Sequoia, but it didn't become a national park until 1940, 60 years after Sequoia. Uh, making Kings Canyon the 22nd National Park. Um, so as we showed you, Kings Canyon is home to the second largest tree in the world, not the third, like I said, the second, which is the General Grant tree, which again is 270 feet high and a mean diameter of 32.2 feet. Um, Kings Canyon is more of a rustic national park, so it only has one road that goes continuously through the park. A lot of the a lot of other national parks have a lot of like ways that you can maneuver around, but this one is meant to be enjoyed is meant to be enjoyed on foot. Um, so the intent was that it would be explored and kind of stay underdeveloped to preserve the natural beauty of the park and see it just as it was meant to be, the same way it was when it was first found and established, and to really have a sense of wonderment as you wander through and get get lost a little bit. So I didn't say on our last video, um, but today is day seven, believe it or not, of our road trip. Um, last full day tomorrow, we're gonna get into LA. Um, and so we were at Kings Canyon this morning, like I showed you, and now we are at Sequoia National Park, which is about an hour and a half away. They actually border each other, but um, with the mountains and like the topography and everything, you can't drive directly to it. You have to go kind of like around. So we got here and we got some bad news um, with all the flooding that's been happening in California recently. Um, a lot of the park is closed down, so we won't actually see any sequoias here. So that's a bummer, but at least we saw some this morning. Um, and I got the answer to my burning question that I don't think I asked you. I was um, concerned about the, the accuracy of my, my guidebook. Um, because it said that the tallest tree in the or the biggest tree in the world is here in Sequoia And then we saw one at Redwood that was taller. So I asked I was like, what's the deal with this? But it considers everything like the volume and the height. So the one we saw was taller But this one's bigger because it has more volume So I thought that was interesting, which we won't see it because it's closed. But um, I don't know Maybe we'll make a trip back here. Who knows? But yeah, so today, um, I guess we're just going to take it easy. We got to Sequoia at like 1030. So we have a lot of time to kill. So right now we're just eating lunch and yeah, we'll see if we do any hikes or whatnot. But we'll bring you along on whatever we do. Of course, it was a bummer that we could only go the first six miles into the park. Um, but we still had a great time because it really enabled us to go really in depth in one area. Um, instead of just a broad overview. So we still have a great time. Um, we've stayed at the Potwisha campground for only $6 a night. And I'm so sorry if I'm wrong because I don't remember, but I'm pretty positive the hike we did was the Marble Falls Trail. 
Um, we did it a little later in the day, so we didn't have time to get all the way to the falls because it was winter and it gets darker earlier. Um, but what we saw was incredible. The views were just awesome. And this is an elevation gain hike, um, but it wasn't exceedingly difficult. Some areas were a little narrow, so I would not bring a stroller or like a, a super young kid on this or a dog. Um, but older kids should be fine to do this. Um, so a little more about Sequoia National Park. Well, actually, first I need to preface with a little English tidbit for all of my fellow word nerds out there. Um, Sequoia isn't the only word in the English language that has all five vowels, but it is the most common one. Um, my science teacher told me that actually when I was in the seventh grade when we were learning about sequoias, and I remember that I have wanted to see them ever since I was hearing about like how big they were. So this was really a bucket list item for me that I got to check off. Um, well, I guess seeing them at Kings Canyon, but I digress. Um, okay, so Sequoia National Park was the second national park established in 1890 after persuasion from our good friend John Muir again. Um, again, he was upset that people were using the park for personal gain, so he wrote to Congress again um, to get it protected as a national park. And similarly to Kings Canyon, this is another one that was left a little more rustic with few roads and intended for backpackers and adventures. Um, and of course, Sequoia is home to the biggest tree in the world, the General Sherman tree. I'm so sorry we weren't able to see it, um, but that one is coming in at a whopping 275 feet tall and a 36 foot diameter. Um, and I'm sure my seventh grade science teacher would like me to remind you that sequoias have a spongy bark that keeps, keeps them hydrated in the California heat and protects them from forest fires. So I found it fascinating that even if they do get burned, they're still able to live and grow and repair themselves. And actually an occasional fire will help create new space for more sequoias to grow because it uh, clears the path for them to get more direct sunlight. Um, so Sequoia was our last stop on our road trip before LA, so this is where I need to say a big thank you and see you later. And don't forget to like and subscribe so you can come with us um, on more of our SoCal adventures that we'll be doing. We love traveling with you guys, so thank you so much for all of your support, and we'll see you guys soon in SoCal. Have a great day. Bye!